A room full of suits of armor, a giant haunted crib, and a graveyard that you'll be dying to get into. We'll be pricing it all as we get a tour through Luigi's Mansion today on this edition of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And impressions and accents. Oh, it is embarrassing. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where, first and foremost, where are my notification squad at? Shout out to all those loyal bell ringers. Now, today we're finally doing an episode I planned to do back in October, but then FNAF just had to release a game. Luigi, always being forced to play second fiddle. First to Mario, and now to Mangle. Then again, is it really that big of a deal? This is a video covering Luigi's Mansion, a game released least over 15 years ago. I'd say the window for relevant hype has sufficiently passed. Or has it? Yeah, it really has, but it is worth noting that last summer Nintendo released a new Luigi's Mansion arcade game exclusive to Japan. It was one that I actually made sure to check out when I was recently over there. Granted, I had zero idea of how to actually play since, you know, Japanese, but brandishing a giant plastic vacuum was pretty awesome. Anyway, this is gonna end up being a long episode, so let's just skip the rest of the intro and cut right to the chase. Random game selection at a random time of year, jokey jokey FNAF reference episode start. For those of you unfamiliar with Nintendo's little spin-off series, Luigi's Mansion puts you in the shoes of Mario's overlooked and overshadowed brother who, through no merit of his own, has just won a mansion in a raffle he never entered. Gotta say, I am a bit jealous since the best thing I've ever won out of a raffle is a pie, but hey, good for him. I celebrate his victories. You know, come to think of it, it wasn't even a good pie. It was Key Lime, which is like the Waluigi of pies. Sure, if there's nothing else on the table, you're gonna eat it, but, you know, if there's an apple pie on that table, you're gonna go for that one first. Anyway, as it turns out, the whole here's a free mansion thing was just a trap put together by King Boo to lure Mario and Co. out into the open and imprison their souls in paintings, as you do. Because in the Mario universe, it's always a painting. Mario gets himself caught and Luigi has to strap on his big boy pants, grab the nearest dust buster, and alternatively suck and blow his way straight to the top of the mansion. It's basically the plot of Resident Evil. If the protagonist were an antiquated racial stereotype of Italian immigrants instead of a poorly voiced bundle of polygons. What? Oh! Oh no! Now, this all got me thinking, how much did this little failed mission of King Boo's cost? I mean, outside of just being horrendously elaborate, it also had to be seriously expensive. And that's not me just coming up with a random topic for an episode. Money plays a huge role throughout this game, ultimately determining the size of the new mansion that Luigi gets at the end of the game. In other words, there is value to all of this stuff that you see, from the house itself to the golden jewels contained inside, but how much is it? How rich? does this game make Luigi by the end of it? An impossible to answer question, you say? Absolutely. A pointless waste of time considering that the game is a work of fiction. Well, of course it is, but darn it, I'm gonna do it anyway since it gives me an excuse to research the post-2008 housing market, architectural trends through the decades, pixel sizes, run speeds, and currency exchanges, all while talking about one of the most fascinating entries in the Mario canon. Now stand aside, naysayers, I've got a date with a fictional haunted mansion. Now before we can even start pricing mansions, you gotta first know what you're working with. What sort of amenities does your mansion have? Where is it located? How old is it? How many square feet is the darn thing? Is it even really large enough to qualify as a mansion? Well, in order to figure that one out, we gotta start somewhere that's really really counterintuitive, Luigi's Heights. Because as all you loyal theorists know by now, in the cartoonishly misproportioned world of the Mario universe, it's hard to tell exactly what size anything is. As over the last five years of this show, I've calculated and recalculated Mario's height no less than four times based on varying pieces of evidence, coming up with some pretty wonky results at times, like the fact that Wario is 10 foot tall, or 304 centimeters, which was supported by the math, just not by any sort of known 
logic. Anyway, the standard we settled on in the Mario at the Olympics video was that Mario is and forever shall be 155 centimeters or 5 foot 1 inches tall. Doing some simple pixel measurements from there, it means that Luigi is 175 centimeters or 5 foot 8. But why do we need to know Luigi's height? Well, knowing it, we can figure out the length of Luigi's stride and the speed at which he moves through this game. That in turn allows me to figure out the dimensions of any given room in the mansion by timing how long it takes to get him to run across it. And it has to be measured in time, since it's incredibly difficult to account for the slanted perspective of the game, which would throw off the traditional pixel measurements of the room. Once I had the data, I was able to build out a pixel to foot ratio that I applied to the in-game minimap, and from there measured out all the rooms and floors of the house, and several hours of measurements and calculations later, we wound up with a working square footage of this colossal old house sporting three whole floors and 36 total rooms. Doing all the math, this thing comes in at just under 30,000 square feet or 2,787 square meters, solidly within the range of what constitutes a mansion, which is considered a meager 8,000 square feet or 743 square meters. Just to give you an idea of exactly how large Luigi's mansion is, here's a picture of Mark Wahlberg's mansion, which is the exact same size. And I use the word mansion loosely because it's not just a mansion, it is a mega mansion. It's about half the size of the White House, or half the size of a football field. And remember, we're talking about the square footage of the house, which, if you've never had the mixed joy and stress of buying a house, is the measure of the finished floors of the home. It's not including the amount of land around the house, or any unfinished attics or basements. So when I say that it's half a football field-sized house, I mean that the rooms alone, when laid together, would be the size of half a football field. And sure, those houses are crazy big, but if you want an extreme example of what a 30,000 square foot residence looks like, look no further than our dear President Donald Trump, who actually has a 30,000 square foot apartment in New York. Apartment. The fact that his thing can be classified using the exact same word as my 250 square foot closet that I lived in when I was in New York is just mind-blowing to me. This is a New York apartment. This is just insane. Now, as you can imagine, the prices of a home this size are gonna vary quite a bit. Trump's penthouse, for example, is valued at $100 million, but that's also in New York City right alongside Central Park. It also happens to be covered in enough gold to stuff Bowser's train bonus level. So his might not be the best example to follow. Looking around more, I found that 30,000 square foot mansions pepper the entire United States, ranging on average between $2 million and $20 million. So where does that leave us? Well, unfortunately, you can't just plug video game mansions into Zillow and get a magical value spat back into your lap. So we're gonna need a little bit more research for this one. First, we have to figure out what kind of house we're looking at. You see, most of the priciest mansions on the market these days are modern constructions with modern amenities, neo-futuristic super castles. When shopping for mansions, or any house really, you need to be aware of how old the house is. Newer homes are always gonna cost you a bit more since everything is fresh and up to code. Now, obviously this is not the kind a mansion that Luigi finds himself trapped in during his quest to rescue Mario, but to determine the range of prices this house would be operating in, we need to determine just how old it is. And this is actually a really fun question. Fun, of course, if you're a nerd like me who loves overanalyzing in-game details that the developers left in. Because Nintendo was super smart and left little design details that allow us to pinpoint the exact time period when this house would have been built. You see, architecture is a lot like clothes, with design patterns, shapes, and overall home layouts all having trends based on their time period, falling in and out of fashion throughout the years just like Jenko jeans and snap bracelets. Seriously though, Jenko jeans, you could shove your whole head in that pant leg. What were we thinking? So just how old of a house is this old house? Well, to pinpoint what era it would have been built in, we have to look at the design details. And without even going inside, there's a lot of clues that can help us. First off, check out that roof. That style of steep sloping roof with windows peeking through, where the roof is around the sides of the building, that's known as a mansard roof. You see it a lot in Europe, especially in very historical cities like Paris. But let's not stop there. Looking at the overall layout of the mansion will give us a clue as to when it was built. The mansion is blueprinted out in a simple box shape with no fancy wings or long hallways to different sections of the house. It's very contained, symmetrical. Once you're actually inside, one of the main features is that bold central staircase and a ton of chandeliers. And looking at the actual classifications and uses of the rooms, we can see elaborate ballrooms and art rooms. 
In short, all of these design details clearly point to one era in architecture, Victorian. And not just any old Victorian style, this mansion very distinctly falls into what's called the Victorian Second Empire style. It's called Second Empire because it's an architectural style that became popular during the reign of Emperor Napoleon III in France. This was a period where the French Empire was rebuilding itself, thus creating a Second Empire in the mid-1800s. Make sense? Second Empire Victorian. Look at that! Video games teaching you about old world European architectural trends. Where else online are you gonna find stuff like this? Fun fact, it's also known as Baroque Revival Architecture. Actually, that's not a fun fact at all, it's just a fact. It also has no bearing on the episode at all. I tell you it only in the hopes that it may one day be useful to you in a quiz bowl tournament or pub trivia. You know, the places where information truly matters. <laughs> Anyway, second era houses, even huge ones, are surprisingly cheap as far as mansions go. But don't you go running for those loan applications just yet. They're affordable because they generally require huge modernization investments, including rewiring absolutely everything, repouring the foundation, and just generally making sure that the darn thing doesn't collapse into a pile of dust. Plus, they have practically no insulation to speak of and are gonna be drafty as all get out. Green friendly, these houses are not. The most expensive Victorian mansions come in at just about $30 per square foot or $30 per 0.1 square meter, which when multiplied out gives our mansion a value of $896,312.03. Less than a million dollars for a house the size of half a football field. When you think about it that way, it ain't too bad. But remember, that's just for the shell of the house. Luigi's mansion comes fully furnished. Granted, you might not want that furniture, but you still gotta pay for it. Chandeliers, art, undead baby cribs, heck, it even comes with its own graveyard, which, and this is a fun fact, would cost over $70,000 to get rid of if you wanted to legally relocate the human remains. Notice, though, that I said legally. into that amount all the antique furniture, china, three leopard skin rugs, a giant harp, and nine full suits of armor, yes I counted, and you're looking at an extra 400 grand from all the junk inside of it. And mind you, that's not including the cost you'd have to pay for the army of Roombas you'd want roaming the place. I mean seriously, every time Luigi humps a new cabinet, dust just pours out of that thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no, Luigi. Oh yeah. Oh. No. Anyway, this brings our total cost of Luigi's Mansion to $1,300,000, or basically what Ryan's Toy Review Channel earned off its 680 million views in the month of December. How's that make you feel? We're all getting out-earned by a four-year-old. YouTube, maker of dreams. All right, all right, I'm not a four-year-old toy reviewer, so that $1.3 million might be a little bit more than I'm willing to pay, but I'm in luck. Luigi's Mansion might still be in our price range thanks to the rules around stigmatized properties. You see, any house or property that's had something terrible or stigmatizing happen in it can be drastically reduced in value. Murder? Stigmatized. Suicide? Stigmatized. The ghost of Luigi hanging itself in the attic? That property be stigmatized. Son. And stigmatized property is the best. It's like Black Friday deals for murder dens, with price reductions going as high as 25%. Best of all, it doesn't matter when the tragedy occurred, the stigmatization can last for decades. Turns out, people tend not to want to live in homes that were scenes of brutal murders. But I guess I could understand why. Blood stains are impossible to get out of the carpet. I've tried bleach, I've tried vinegar, I've tried baking soda. None of it works. So when it comes to Luigi's Mansion, sure, maybe not every ghost died in there, but seriously, we can be pretty sure that a mother, father, and their infant child met an unfortunate end inside its halls. The rooms are still decked out for this family. So assuming you're comfortable living in the presence of the walking dead, it makes our final running total for Luigi's entry on the MTV Cribs programming slate a cool $986,000. Just shy of one million. What a steal! So Luigi becoming the owner of his own mansion isn't gonna quite make him as well off as you might expect. 
or does it? You see, the big twist here is that while the mansion might not be worth all that much, the piles and piles and piles of extra treasure that are hidden inside that mansion in the form of gems, coins, dollar bills, and freaking gold bars are worth a whole heck of a lot more. And they're real, as we see Luigi using all of this wealth at the end of the game to pay for his new house. So, using the cheapest value of a good delivery gold bar at the smallest size of 350 troy ounces, or just over 10 kilograms to determine the approximate value of 1G. G, which is the game's currency. By doing that, I learned that these ghosts have dumped over 500 million dollars worth of change in between those couch cushions. Holy gold standard, Batman. No wonder Luigi is so excited to hump the furniture. Who is bankrolling these ghosts? And if you think that I'm pulling that number out of thin air, oh no, my friends, think again. We priced as much as we could. Here's a brief glimpse of that shopping list. In other words, in one rundown mansion, King Boo and his thugs crammed over five 500 other mansions worth of treasure into the place. Just sitting there waiting to be vacuumed up? Suck on that, Mark Wahlberg. You and your mansion ain't cutting it. Luigi is worth a cool 500 mil. What are you at? What? 200? Huh, sucks to be you. Actually, no. No, it probably doesn't. So, loyal theorists, there you have it. If you want to get rich, be sure to find a giant, haunted, Second Empire-era Victorian mansion filled with ghosts who have no idea what the value of the dollar is. But in the end, the true moral of today's episode that we can all walk away with is this. Sure, we all may feel bad for Luigi because he's the forgotten brother and all that, but seriously, save your tears. The guy's got more money than all of us put together. I looked it up, there are 2,600 people in the world who have have 500 million dollars or more. He is the 0.0001%. So you know what? Suck it up, Luigi, you filthy rich bastard. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.